Welcome to Electra Online and now in order to understand how reactions work, let's talk a little bit about the activation, the activation energy. So the assumption is that when we put reactants together that reaction will normally take place, but that's not always the case because there's a certain amount of bond strength between the molecules in the reactants and so before they can actually start reacting and form different molecules, we have to break those bonds. So that means that enough kinetic energy has to come into the reaction to, to uh, vibrate or break the bond sufficiently in order for the reaction to take place. So what happens sometimes is that you bring two reactants together and nothing happens because you first have to give enough energy to the reactants so that they can actually break the bond sufficiently for the next reaction to take place and for the, the products, and this should not be reactants, but this should be for the products to form. Now, it could be that the amount of energy released in that reaction is way more than what you need to get the reaction going, and the amount of energy that you need is kind of like getting a ball over the hump. For example, you kick a soccer ball, and you got to get over the hump. You have to kick it hard enough to get over there. Once you get past the hump, then, of course, the ball will roll down to a lower energy level, and that's, again, what an exothermic reaction is. It gives off energy, but it requires a little bit of energy in order to get the reaction started. And without that additional energy, the reaction will never take place. So that's what we mean by the activation energy. And there's quite a few reactions that require that energy, even though a sufficient amount is released to more than payback for the energy needed to get the reaction going. In some cases, the reaction is not exothermic, it is endothermic. In other words, you still need to provide activation energy, but you need to provide so much activation energy to get the reaction going that the energy that you get from making the products is less than what it took to activate the reaction or to get the reaction going. And so therefore, that energy typically comes within the, the, uh, the products, or I should say from the reactants, and so therefore maybe that the temperature may go down from a solution based upon this kind of situation where the amount of energy you put back into the system is less than the amount of energy it took to actually get the reaction going. So in something like this, you could probably actually measure a decrease in temperature because the energy has to come from somewhere, and in this case, you probably will measure an increase in temperature because more energy is released. In both cases, again, the situation is um, that you need some energy to get the reaction going. And it's all about what these molecules are made out of, and we'll see some examples of that to, to, make, to solidify this concept. But it's kind of interesting because normally you would expect you put two reactants together and, and immediately something happens. It may not happen unless sufficient energy is available to get the reaction going. And so the speed at which a reaction takes place, a lot has to do with how much activation energy you're required to have the reaction take place.